Okay, we are about, we are starting right now, so we can mute ourselves. We are starting right now, so let's mute ourselves. If there are questions, suggestions, you can put them in a the chat box for us to, for me to um, read it. So yesterday we we tackled um, trend lines, and then we also considered trends the various types of trends that we have the uptrend the downtrend the sideways market and we explain that an uptrend is where we see markets creates higher highs and then higher lows when markets create higher highs and higher lows but then in simple terms, whenever we see markets moving up like this, it means that we are in an uptrend. And then the other one is the downtrend where markets creates where markets creates lower lows and then lower highs. Where markets create lower lows and lower highs. That's where we have a downtrend and then we also have the sideways markets where um, markets does not have a definite or an exact direction so market just moves up and down within a channel or a zone so when markets moves like this, it has no particular direction, even though it's moving up and down. But then when you look at the general trend, um, it's just moving in the same area. It's just moving within the same area. So these are the ones we considered yesterday. And today we are going to focus on channels and they are equally under, or they are also are tied to the trend lines, the support and resistance that we know. Hello, can you hear me? Is it okay now? Yes, yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. So now, this evening, we are going to focus on channels, and then we, we visit the real market for a few examples, then we end the session. I believe you guys know that we are ending tomorrow, God willing. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, please. All right. So if you have your, your notebooks, your daughters, and then your pens ready. Yes, we have. Okay. So channels. Channels are parallel lines at the same angle of an uptrend or a downtrend. A channel is a parallel line at the same angle of an uptrend or a downtrend. Others would also say that channels are parallel lines defined by highs and lows of an of an asset price action, of an asset price action. So channels are also known as trend channels. You can, you can simply say channels or you can say trend channels or you can also say price channel. Any, any of these, when, when you hear people mention, once you hear of channel, you should know that in the same thing they are talking about. Style. Is this still breaking? Yes. No, we can hear you. Uh, no, we can we hear, hear you. I think it's your network. We can hear your network. Okay, okay. So if you can't hear me, well, it means that it's your network. So kindly check for us. Others can hear me. So if you are not able to hear me, kindly check your network. Okay, so I've just given an explanation to what a channel is. 
So let me um, have a few examples here. We already know what support is, what um, resistance is. We also know what um, trend lines are. And we know the various types of trends, the uptrend, the downtrend, the sideways. And then when we talk of channels, when we talk of channels, I've already explained that they are parallel lines. They are parallel lines at the same angle of an uptrend or a downtrend of an uptrend or a downtrend so when we have something like this when we have something like this or maybe something like this and then if we have something like this these are the channels that I am talking about right now. These are the channels that I'm talking about right now. So let me um add few features of the channels. Whenever you want to create a channel, you can put these um points down. I want I want to clear the theory aspects, then we go into the real markets with the um practical side. So anytime you are you want to draw a channel, there are a few things that you need to have in mind. So make sure anytime you are drawing a channel, you have these things in mind. So price channel typically run close to each to each other. It runs typical. It typically runs close to a para. Hello, can you guys hear me? Please type one in the chat box if you can hear me. Yeah, type one in the chat box. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. We can hear you. Okay. Then let's let's get the points down. Price channel typically run close to a para. Hello. Um, please give me few, give me a few minutes to um to check some. It seems right. you guys cannot hear me, so give me just um a minute to check my name. We can hear you. You can hear me. Yes, we can hear you very clear. Okay, okay. Then let me just proceed. Let me just proceed. so let's take the um the points price channel. Typically runs close to a pair of each other and are super helpful to traders because it identifies trends. It identifies. Um, who is writing on the screen? Kindly delete them for me. Kindly delete them for me. Do not write on the screen. And then whenever you are drawing channels to, you need to make sure that they are parallel to each other and then the bottom of the channel is considered as a buy zone the bottom of the channel is considered as a buy zone and then the top of the channel is considered as a sell zone the top of a channel is considered as a sell zone so these are the few points that we are going to put down this evening. Let me just take them one more time if you should in case you missed any of the points I just gave. So price channel typically run close to each other. And they are super helpful for traders because it helps them identify trends. Both lines must be parallel to each other. So just as you can see on the screen right now, they must be parallel to each other. And then after drawing those two lines, the bottom is considered as a buy zone. And then the top is considered as a sell zone. The top is considered as a sell zone. So let me, let me clear the screen again and then let's consider this as a channel so one 
they should be parallel to each other and then mostly they are very close to each other and when you have them like this we are made to understand that the bottom is considered as a buy zone the bottom is considered as a buy zone and it's also the uh, sorry our support It's considered as a buy zone, which is also a support. And then the tops are considered as sell zones. They are considered as sell zones. So anytime you have a channel, if you are trading based on a channel, this is what you need to have in mind as the tops are considered sell zones and then the bottoms are considered buy zones. So we have three types of channels. Just as we have three types of trains, we also have three types of channels and then they have the same name as the trains. We have the up channel, the down and then the sideways channel. And then if you want to um, use the names or the words that a lot of people know, we have the ascending channel, we have the descending channel, and then the sideways. The sideways is always the sideways. And then others can also call it, or others also call it the horizontal channel. The horizontal channel. So we are going to consider all these three types of channels I've just mentioned. So I'll start with the ascending channel. And there are ways to trade this type of channels. So when we say ascending, can somebody please explain to us in your own ways what you understand by ascending? Yeah. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. To my own view, ascending channel is a two parallel line moving to the upside. That is, it is when the market is in an uptrend okay so when market is in an uptrend like this in an uptrend yes and it's formed when the market creates higher highs higher lows in between the channels that's when you consider it as a as an ascending channel okay okay that's great one more person Hello. Yes, sir. This is it. Okay. Yeah. In my in a layman's view, ascending anything ascending means is climbing up. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So just as um we've had two explanations from two different people, it all means the same thing. Ascending when market is moving up or when a channel is moving upwards, that's where we have an ascending channel. That's where we have an ascending channel. So now let's consider the other one to the descending channel. So we have ascending and descending. So ascending is the opposite of descending. If I'm right, let me know. If I'm wrong, let me know. Yes, please. Am I right? Yes, you are. Okay. Yes, you are. Yes, you are right. All right. So ascending is the opposite of descending. If it, it, it's either you are going up or you are going down, either you are climbing or you are falling. So we have ascending channel where price or the channel is heading upwards. And then we have the descending channel where market is actually going down and then the sideways is also like the, the sideways market the ranging market so anytime you hear of sideways ranging consolidation kindly know that it's um the same thing it's 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 trying to explain to you or tell you that market has no particular direction. It's just moving. 
it's just moving up and down within a particular zone or a channel. So this is our ascending channel, this is the descending channel, and then this is the sideways channel. This is the sideways channel. No. Okay, so um, we have the various types of channels here. The ascending, this is the ascending. We have the descending over here and then the sideways also here. We also have the sideways. And somebody asked the question that when we are drawing the channels, should we consider the bodies or the the rigs. So anytime you are drawing, you are using a train line, please do well to ignore ignore the, the rigs and then mark the, the, the opens and then the closest that you can identify. So um, I've answered your question. Whenever you are drawing or you are using train line, make sure you ignore the the rings and then you consider the closest and then the bodies, sorry, the openings of, of, of the candle. And on our first meeting, during the first meeting, I, I drew a candlestick and then I labeled it. I, I, I labeled the candlestick and then I indicated the body, the close, the, the highs and then the lows. The highs and then the lows. So for the sake of people who missed it, let me just do it one more time. Let me do it one more time. So this is a candlestick, whether a bullish or a bearish. But then for you to know um, where the open of a candle is and then where the close of a candle is, the high and the low, you should be able to identify whether it's a bullish candle or a bearish candle. Anytime I try drawing this one, I guess it's wrong. Let me try one more time. Good. How far? Okay, so this is the body of the candle. This is the body of the candle. As we can see here, this is the body of the candle. So this whole area that I've marked with the yellow color is the body of the candle. That is the body of the candle. And then if, let's assume this is um, a bullish candle, it means that this would be the open and then this would be the close. If this is supposed to be a bearish candle, it means that this would be the open and then this would be the close. But these ones, these thin lines we see here are the wicks, the wicks. And then this is, if this is a bullish candle, this is the open, this is the close. It means that this would be the, the low and then this would be the high. I believe this is clear. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Yes, now please. Now let's uh, move to the real markets and look out for few examples in the real markets. Let's look out for few examples in the real markets. If you just came... Today's meeting would be um, very short. It will be very, very short. So now let's just move to MetaTrader 5. Okay, so we have MetaTrader 5 here. Okay, so somebody is asking the appropriate time frame when... This is so bad. The appropriate time frame when drawing um, a trend, uh, sorry, a channel. So just as um, I explained yesterday that on any, 
on any um, time frame, you can draw your trend line same way. On any um, time frame, you can have your channels drawn. You can draw your channels on any on any time frame. So you can say to maybe um, H4. Hello, Mr. Christian. Yes, sir. Um, this is Joel. I want okay. to ask if you draw your uh, uptrends. I'm uh, sorry, I mean, if you draw your trend lines, okay, maybe resistance support on H4. Now, does it mean you have to see to it that you trade on H4? You can't change to M30 because today I drew a support and resist on a particular time frame, but when I go to another time frame, it seems like it's not touching. like the point which I drew it on is not touching. Yes. It's not touching the line. Yes. So, it depends on um, the time frame that you choose to trade on. So, let's assume I, I take... Okay, so for what you just explained, let me just draw these lines here. Um, wait, let me... Let me. So let's use this. And up. So we have um, this channel drawn down here. Currently, we are on H4. Currently, we are on H4. But then, when you switch to a different time frame, you won't get it as nice as you drew it on the previous time frame. And then, sometimes, so you'll be able to get it, but then, it won't be... So, you see, when I switch from H4 to H1, it's still within the same channel, right? The candles are still within the same channel. But then on the H4, there were some touches we had. We are not having them on the H1. So if you draw your channel and then you want to trade based on that particular channel, it means that you are not supposed to switch from um, the channel that you drew the, the time frame. You are not supposed to switch from that time. Sorry, on the time frame that you drew the channel, you're not supposed to switch from that time frame to a different one because once you switch, you're not going to get it as accurate as you had it on the previous time frame. So if I want to trade, maybe I want to just be following the channel and then be picking uh, sells and buys, just as the points that I give indicates that the, the, tops, in, uh, the tops represents or the tops are are known to be sell zones and then the buys are known to be sorry the lows are known to be um buy zones so once you draw your channel like this anytime you see markets touch your trend line when they touch the support or the, the, the low it means that it has entered your buy zone so you can buy when it touches another um, another level on the um, of the same channel line or the same trend line it means that it has your zone again and so you can buy again so you can see this example here market was just moving within this channel until there was a breakout until there was a breakout so currently we are on h1 if i decide to switch to maybe 15 minutes or five minutes i can still have other channels to draw i can still have channels within this time frame i can still draw channel but then just as the explanation goes they should be parallel and mostly they are very close they are very close to each other so this is equally this is also a channel I believe you are getting what the um, the meaning of a channel is.
Yes, sir. Yes, so the channel seven. Yes, Chris. Yeah, they do help us indicate the trend or they help us know the trend, whether a downtrend, an uptrend, or a sideways market. So on H4, we were able to draw or indicate some channels. And now I've moved from H4 to 15 minutes and I am still able to get some channels to draw. Let me move from this um, pair to a different pair. Um, hello, boss. Yes, sir. Um, please, I want to find out if you enter a trade in a four hour time frame, does it mean that you are supposed to be in the trade for four hours or no? Okay, well, I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. okay, so with the time frames that we have, you see the candlesticks we have over here. I hope you can see the candlesticks. So, currently, yes, I am please. on 30 minutes. So what the time frame means here is that every candlestick you see here, every candlestick you see here lasted for 30 minutes. So if I switch from 30 minutes to one hour or each one, you see it has changed. And then here it means that every candlestick we have here lasted for one hour or 60 minutes. If I move from H1 to maybe one minute, it means that all the candlesticks we have here lasted for just a minute. So now let's consider or let's focus on the current candlestick. You can just check your time. So are you recording this second? Yes, I'm recording. Yeah, yeah. So you can just look at your time, then you check the current candlestick. This is the current candlestick. In just a minute time, it will move from the current one to a new candlestick. You see, a new one has started forming. It means that the minutes of that candlestick or the duration of that candlestick is up. So in a minute time, this candlestick will also close and then a new one will start forming. So this is the meaning of the time frames that we have. And they also help us um, see a bigger picture of the market. They help us see a smaller picture of the market. So if you are trading on H1, it doesn't mean that you are supposed to be in a trade for one hour. If you select H4 candlestick, it doesn't mean that you are supposed to stay in a trade for four hours. I believe um, your question has been answered. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Chris. Yeah. Hello, Chief. Please, I want to ask you. Okay. So, from, from the deduction of what you are saying, it means that the higher time frame gives you a view or a pictorial nature of what the market will be doing or the next move of the market. But as to you to trade, you need to use the smaller time frame to de determine the, your trade. Is that true or? Okay, so with the um, higher time frames, they help us to see a bigger picture of them. So let me um let me give you. I'll, I'll be giving. Let me give you an example here. Um, please, uh, I have few trades that I need to close. Please, let me just close them in few. And then every time we meet, I post um a screenshot on the channel for you guys to see how far my trades are going and then how I move the market this evening. So I'll be posting another one. So now, this is um, rule 101S. We are on five minutes, right? We are on five minutes. Let me explain something to you here. Can you see the dates showing down here? We have 17th November 2022. And then here, follow my Keza. Here we have 18th yes. November 18th. 2022. Yes. And then we have the time here, 2.15. 335. I hope you can see this is the full um the full screen on the laptop right now. I have a full screen here and I, I can see up to 17 November 2022 and 17 was just yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so let's now switch from 15 minutes to maybe daily. 
Now let's come back again to the same area. It's the same screen we are seeing, right? So now let's look at the date. What do you see here? 14 February 2022. February. So with the H sorry, with the daily time frame, we've been able to see from um, the last eight months, the general trend of last eight months. So, so it means that we are seeing a bigger picture of the markets. So for the past eight months, we could see that market, this is where market was. See, even, uh, guys, it seems uh, we have just a minute left for this meeting to come. Let me uh, post a different link in the, in the group for us to join again. Okay, so I was explaining this. Um, somebody asked um, the reason why we use the higher time frames, and then I was explaining that the higher time frames help us get a bigger picture of the market. So as you can see here, markets that um, oh, which which pair was it? So when we selected the um, the daily time frame, it was able to take us back for eight good months, the previous eight months. So this helps us get a bigger picture of the market. This is telling us that for the past eight months, since oh, this is even December, so you can see here, December 2021, the 101ness has been selling massively so this is where if you have to consider this from december 2021 it has been selling like this it has been selling like crazy so as we can see here it has been selling so if you look at the bigger picture like this you have it at the back of your mind that okay for this particular pair ever since um it came on the dairy platform it has been moving in a downtrend it has been moving in a downtrend so anytime you switch to the daily time frame and then you are able to get a sell opportunity on it, you can you can um, have so much confidence in it that you've been able to catch the trend. So you'll be able to move with the trend. But if you move from the higher time frame to a lower time frame, it means that you are just looking at a smaller picture of the market, maybe a smaller picture of the market. H1 when I move to the current candle, on daily, we are having up to November 7, 2022. So you see, the daily is giving us up to 2021, December 2021. It's almost a year, almost one year history. So this is the reason why we switch from one time frame to the other. Joshua, I hope your question has been answered. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for the question. Do you have any other question? Um, yes, okay. I have a question. Okay, um, my question is, um, maybe you are using M15 to take your trade. Okay, um, which particular time frame will you consider as your bigger time frame? The, the higher time frame, again, in case you are doing what I'm taking trades on M15. Okay. Um, which higher time frame should I use as my bigger or my higher higher time frame since I'm taking trade on uh, M15? Okay, so if you make a decision that you are taking trade on M15, it means that you want to stick to that particular time frame. But then, um, if you want to analyze the market, we advise you focus, you, you, you consider or you have in consideration the bigger time frames so these are the higher time frames these are the time frames i have on my machine right now i have mn which is the monthly i have w1 which is the weekly i have d1 which is the daily and then i have h4 h1 
these are the higher time we can consider maybe from age four upwards as the higher time frames or maybe we can um, consider each one as well and then this one the 15 minutes the 30 minutes the five minutes some have 10 minutes one minute two minutes those ones are the lower time frames so if you are picking trade and eh, you first look at the higher time frame to see the trend right now on step index we can see a descending channel right we can see a descending channel or a downtrend because market is moving downwards market is moving downwards but then it could be that we would move from maybe m m15 to a different or a higher time frame and then we will see that no maybe we are not even in 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 a in a in a downtrend so let's just forget let me mark this area let's use this area as our area of interest mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then let's forget about this long candlestick over here let's just focus on these ones right let me switch from four four hour to 15 minutes This is not giving us a good picture. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the area that we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. Let me reduce it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we can see markets moving sideways. If you can also see that um, type mm -hmm. one in the chat box, we can see where I've marked as our area or point of interest, our area of interest. Market was just moving sideways. There was not a definite or a direct decision. Mm. Okay, somebody is asking whether markets would break. Um, we we will we will analyze that once we are done with this. Let me explain this. So currently we are on a uh, 30 minutes. Let me switch to H4. Okay, so on H4, you see we have a sideways market over here. A sideways market over here. Now let's consider, let me use this arrow and then draw from top to the down. Then let me switch to maybe um, 15 minutes. Okay, so what do we see on the 15 minutes time frame? Yeah, what do we see here? Trend line. Yes, which trend? A downtrend. A downtrend. downtrend. Great. Yeah. So you see, downtrend. on 15 minutes, I, I intentionally marked that area with this arrow. On 15 minutes, we have a downtrend. But when we move to H4, what did we see there? A sideways market. So this is the reason why you always don't have to stick to just one time frame. So if you pick a sell here and then you tell yourself that market is in a downtrend, so you are going to swing it. Yes, market will move in your direction, but in few minutes or in few hours, it will turn back and then you will have um a losing trade because you didn't focus or you didn't consider the higher time frame. You will have a sell or a downtrend on the lower time frame, but when you look at the bigger picture of the market, market is actually ranging. I hope this is clear. So this is the, yes, uh, this yes. is one of the reasons why you, you shouldn't focus on just one time frame. And then you shouldn't also analyze markets on a higher time frame and then pick or maybe make an entry on the same higher time frame. You're not supposed to do that. And then let me still use this same point to explain. Let's assume we have the sideways market on H4, right? And then I want to maybe market is market has um hit this particular spot where the Kela is right now. And then on H4, I'm expecting it to sell. 
So let us assume, let me mark here, where this candlestick ended. Let us assume I see the market here, where the candle, uh, the Kesa is. And then I decide to sell because market is ranging. I decided to sell here because market is ranging, but then, should in case I sell here, we see market went up a little bit before selling actually, right? So after analyzing or finding um, a direction on a higher time frame, you also need to switch to the lower time frame to see how market is behaving, whether there would be a pullback somewhere or whether a market is actually in the same direction that you want to go for. So if you get a sell or a higher time frame, maybe H4, it doesn't mean you should be on the same H4 to pick an entry. You need to lower the time frame to a lower, you need to take from a higher time frame to a lower time frame to get a sniper or maybe even if not a sniper entry, at least a safer entry so that you don't um, stay in the trade for a very long time before market starts moving in your direction. Because sometimes when you enter a trade and then um, market is not moving in your direction, it's 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 boring. This morning, for instance, um, I I I felt some way. In fact, I I prepared banku and I was ready to eat, but um, I paid the trade on for seventy five French Charlie. I lost appetite. <laughs> I love that. Right. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, but then the good news is that at the end I still made money. But wow. you see, because I didn't focus on the lower time frame, I just picked the, the, the trade on the higher time frame and it had to do a pullback before moving in my direction. But I was lucky I didn't um I didn't um ignore risk management. I had enough money in the accounts, so even even with a pullback, I was still able. The account was still able to sustain the market. So you imagine me picking trade on the wrong entry and then also refusing to apply a proper risk management. Be sure say kaba now see kana she. You understand? But then because I I didn't misuse my risk, I at the end of the day I ended up closing the trade with about six hundred and seventy something dollars profit. So anytime wow. you analyze the markets, wow, yes. <laughs> so anytime you analyze the markets, you are not supposed to ignore any of the time frames. You are not supposed to ignore the higher time frame. You are not supposed to ignore the lower time frame as well. So let me um if if you guys are in the group, um I told you so group. If you are there, you can just um I'm just posting. Let me post the trade I am talking about right now. Let me see if I will get the screenshots. Okay, so this is the trade. Hello, Chris. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, please, I have a question. Okay. I, I wanted you to go back to the H4. Step okay. index. H4. Step index, okay. I, yes. Okay, so you can check in the group. I've posted the... um. The screenshot there, you you could see. Okay, so the question. The question is that can can I say that the market is now in a downtrend because of what is happening currently? Okay. Because yeah, of the market. The, the very candlestick, the yes, main very candlestick over there. Okay. Okay, so um yesterday. Was it Joe asked a question when when there is when market is ranging or consolidating or when we have a sideways market and then market decides to break out? Where do we expect um market to return for the rates, right? And then I explained that when market breaks support, it means that we look out for a sell. When market breaks resistance, we look out for a buy, right? So let me um, explain this before I, I, I come to your question. Mm -hmm. So now, if Joa is here, this is a sideways market from this area up to this area, right? 
So this is a sideways market. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then we can see this. Let me see if there's something here. You can see this um, bearish candle. This red candle was able to pass through the supports, right? And then the confirmation candle closed below the previous one, right? Are you guys with me? Yes, we can yes, see yes, it. Yes, 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 we are with you, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and see. then when when we ask the question, I was like, whenever there is a breakout, you you focus on the 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 very or the nearest um swing points or the immediate swing points or where markets um had a reaction before the consolidation or the sideways markets began. And this is on H4, right? And we also know that we are we are not supposed to focus on just one time frame. This could be a retest. This could be a retest. So um let's search from H H4 to maybe H1 or 30 minutes to see. So Helda was asking whether um we are in a downtrend or not. Currently, market has been able to break out of the ranging market. And then it broke out the support. So we expect a sell or a down trend. I've already explained this. But then let's focus on this. Let's focus on this area. Oh, pick it. Wait. Yes, that was the area I was asking about. But you asked a question here. Yes, I asked, uh, is price going to break this? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You were the one who asked that. Okay, so you were asking whether uh, price is going to break it or not. So here, yes, um, we, can't, we, we, we can't know or we can't tell whether price will break it or not. Okay? But then we also know that whenever um, market hits or maybe market touches a particular zone, for a very long time, it means that that very zone is very strong. And then when it breaks out of that zone, the strength that we had in that particular zone moves or pushes the market, right? So here we are on H4. Let me um, switch to H1 to see if we will be able to see something. Thank you. Okay, so this is it, right? Hmm. Maybe it's not that serious. No, please, um, the one on the phone with either his girlfriend or his wife, not can you please babe. mute yourself? It's not serious. Hey, Unia, Unia, you did all. Please, I can ask a question. Hey, I don't look at it. Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hey, hi. <laughs> so, um, um, good evening, everyone. I, I want to ask, um, the area where we have marked right now, I'm talking about the support area that we have marked right now. I mean, the uh, rectangle that's more, yeah. This one, okay. I think currently, yeah, I want to ask, so, uh, you were explaining about the support and the resistance. Yeah. Currently, we have breaking that support, which is right, right now a resistance. And we are seeing a, a, a retest on the on the four hours, which it is currently selling. Mm -hmm. I want to ask, so if you want to be a swing trader right now, mm -hmm. and they say you took a sell from where the retest uh, ended, okay, where exactly must you anticipate your profit to be? Okay, so and your risk to be okay. as well. All right, so um. Since we um we expect markets for, for any time markets wants to retest or maybe we want to set a target or a stop loss, mostly when we want to set a target, uh, you can have multiple targets, maybe targets one, target two, target three, target four, target five, any number of targets that you want, depending on how much you want to uh, make from the markets, how long you want to stay in the market, right? So Let's look at this here. We have a swing point over here. Market reacted here. So this 
would serve as another, we can um, draw this as a zone, right? We have another zone over here. So we can just extend this. We can extend this. Already, market has played out here because this is where markets return for the rate test. Oh, no, let me delete this. You see, this is where markets, this is where markets return for the rate test, right? We can see it here. I hope you can all see it. So market went back and then this has already been tested. So when market is coming back, you are not supposed to focus on this because it has already played its role. So we are not supposed to focus on this. Now we need to focus on the zone below. So when you are setting a target, this is the zone you need to consider. Maybe as your target one, this is the zone you need to consider. But for us to tell whether the zone will be broken or not, we are not magicians and we are not market makers. So we can only observe it. We can only observe it. Because here, yeah, when market so was which which market, means that we can we which means that we can play it by setting our SL exactly to break it, yes right? yes so once you are in Thank profit you. you can just lock your profit so let us assume you pick a cell here if I'm supposed to maybe teach on entries the the types of entries the where you you need to place your stop loss where you need to place your target when you pick a cell here you see we have this um. Um, we have this zone over here. Let, let, let me um, zoom in to see whether it was a zone or not. Okay, so there was a few reactions here. So if you pick a cell here, eh, if you pick a cell here, you can decide to put your SL above this. You can decide to put your SL above this. You're not supposed to risk more. So you can decide to put your SL above this. This is H1. So moving, taking your, uh, maybe your, your entry here and then putting your stop loss here, it makes sense, right? So this is where you need to put your stop loss. And then where to put your target, you focus on the first, the nearest swing point. This is, uh, which is this particular zone. So this is where you place your first target. And then when market moves in your direction, you can decide to lock your stop loss, sorry, to lock your profit. But then, when locking your profits, you also need to do calculations. You also need to do calculations. So you see, we have this um, low over here. You are not supposed to put your SL below this because we know that markets can return to come and then retest. Markets can actually return to come and then retest this again before it continues to sell. It's possible markets will come and then retest this again before it goes down. So anytime you are locking your profits, you don't lock it because you don't want to lose money, right? You lock it because you want markets to continue moving in your direction and then um, you want to secure your profit. But it doesn't mean you just don't want to lose profits. If you are locking profits, you should also focus on the same point that, oh, if you make the SL tight, market can just come and kick you out and still move in the direction. So if it's possible for market to return, to retest this, it means that if you have your entry here, you can maybe lock your profits somewhere here, above this, where you believe market could return to retest again. You put it above this, and then you watch it, you watch market move. And if it's able to enter this zone, then we expect it. Is it anything is possible? It can be anything. It's either it returns back or it breaks it. So you watch it. Once you lock your profit, just have patience. You have to track again and wait. If market is able to break this zone downwards, it means that we are still um, expecting a continuation. So if market is able to break this, then it means that your sell would continue. So I don't know if you've seen um, people draw, um, maybe they have their, um, their setups, they will have a zone and then they will use an arrow after the zone, pointing it down. 
It means that, or they are trying to indicate that if market is able to pass that zone, it means that market will continue to move in that direction. And, and also, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, and also, um, I think, um, um, and when the market when my market come down to take their liquidity there, it can also fund a range in there before it will break down. Sure. That's also yeah. what I'm seeing there. Um, which one are you talking about? This zone. Yes, please. Hello, Mr. Christian. Yeah, hello. Um, please, I want is Joe. I wanted to ask, okay. based on what factor do you see that the market could retest at a particular point? Because it looks like almost all the points you are saying it could retest is a sideways kind of trend. I don't know if that's what you base on to see that this zone could retest or what's, what's, oh, what 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 do you come, see? Um, come again, please. I was really, come again. I, I was saying that based on what terms okay. you say a zone could we test like the market could we test at a certain zone because per my observation most of the zones you show you we test looks like the sideways kind of trend is that what you used to see is it will we test or like based on what factor you say this zone this in this particular zone the market could we test at this place i don't know if you get my question yeah right. so um i was talking about maybe whenever there is um a breakout and eh? You see, whenever there is a movement, eh, and then wherever market retains, market doesn't just retain. Something causes market to retain. If market is supposed to, maybe, you see, let's focus on um, the tops that we have here. Let's focus on these tops. Eh? Let's focus on these tops. You see, market moved from this particular area. It came down. It came down and then it went up again, came down, went up again, and then it came down. So look at the 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 um, the major swing points that we have here. We had the first swing point here, and then the second obvious swing point was this. And then look at where markets retained. It came to have. It came to reach the level of the previous obvious swing points. Even though it passed it a little bit, but then it didn't go far. It's returned at this point. It came down, and then look at this one too. They were almost on the same level. You see, they were almost on the same level. So whenever market returns or wherever market tries to change direction, it doesn't then, uh, it doesn't just change direction. Something must happen, something must occur, or something must cause it to return. So here, markets did, um, we had, so look at how market behaved over here. Let me see if I can move this. Let's focus on only this area. Let me. Let me mark here. Let's focus on just this area. Can somebody tell me something here? Here, just this area that I've marked. Can you see something there? Can somebody tell me something here? Yeah, Chief. Yeah. It was a consolidation and breakout. Okay. Okay, so I'll go for the breakout. I'll go for the breakout. So when you this is uh which time for me? This is each one. This is each one. You see, there was a breakout here. Let me delete this. There was a breakout, right? There was a breakout. If I'm supposed to draw a support and resistance, there was a breakout here. So there was a breakout and then a red test. There was a, so I'm answering your question, Joe. There was a breakout and then a retest. So it means that something has happened here. And yesterday, I said that when we are trading price action or when we are doing technical analysis, we mostly focus on the past combined with the present to predict the future. So I know that there was a breakout and retest here. So something occurred here. 
It means that even though market has moved, it has traveled a long way, like for some days now, and then now it's coming back to the same zone. So if market is coming back to the same zone, once I know there has been a breakout and a retest, when market gets there, it won't be easy for market to just pass and go, and go its way. It won't be very easy for market to just cross and then go. Definitely, there's going to be a reaction. And somebody said that he expects market to do a ranging market or maybe a consolidation here before he decides to break, and that's true. So, Joel, I don't just um, say that, okay, something is going to happen here. I just focus on the past, the history of the markets, in addition to the present, to predict what I feel or what I believe or what I think would happen next. Is it clear? Yes, yeah, I'll say it is. I think maybe I'll just have to try it a couple of times and see. I don't really get it, but it's fine. I'll just I'll try it a couple of times and see okay, how so, it works. All right, so let me take this again because there was a breakout and then a retest here, and here markets consolidated. In, uh, sorry, markets consolidated. If you want to focus on only this area. Right, there was a consolidation here. There was a consolidation here. And then there was a breakout, a red test, and then market moved. So market has moved, uh, and then it's coming back. So once it comes back, because there was a breakout, there was a, a raging market over there. There's no way markets can just pass without reacting to that past activity over there. This is what you have to, um, this is what you need to have in mind. There's no way markets would pass this area without reacting to this. It is just like uh, maybe um, Ghana meeting Uruguay in a World Cup because of what Suarez was saying. You know, anytime we meet, we are no, um, we will try to maybe um, take a, a, a revenge or something. The market behaves like like um, how humans also behave. So if you visit it most of the time. If if you um if you analyze it most of the time, you get to understand the behavior of it. So this is what I've come to understand, and then you can also have it in mind that anytime there there is um a react sorry anytime market breaks out or maybe a consolidation happens somewhere, and then market moves either up or down, and then it comes back. There's no way market will just move. No. So this is a clear example, and then a proof that. Here, where markets return for the rate test. This is where markets read for the rate test, right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's come back to this same area again. This is the line. Let me change the color. Okay, so this is the area it's retained, right? And then look at what happened here. Yeah, yeah hello. Now we are with you, sir. Okay, so look at, let me um, tell you what happened here. You see there was a breakout here, right? And then markets went up, and then it came down. This is where markets ended before it came down for the red test, right? So... Markets where um, it's returned for the red test. You see, here when there was a breakout, markets went up, returned here for the red test. And then, you see, after markets moving for days, moving for days, and then decided to break out of this ranging market, decided to break out of this ranging market, 
and this is where markets ended and then returned for the red test. So I don't know if you are getting this is where markets read and then I'm from, getting I'm getting okay, I'm get and then return for the red test. It's the same area when breakouts occurred here. It's the same level Whoa. that market return for the red test. Yeah. Yes, I'm getting yes, the same yeah. thing happened. So this is a proof that whenever there is a ranging market, whenever there is a breakout, a consolidation, or whatsoever, when market moves even for 10 years and then it comes back, the very first time it gets there, there should be a reaction. And then the reaction could be maybe a pullback, a ranging market, any anything you can take off, there should be at least a reaction. Yes, so now we are in a zone. Let me delete these guys. Right now we are in a, we are we are entering another zone where we expect market to either break out or reverse. Market to either break out or reverse. So this is it right now. This is it right now. So it's either and for people who are very aggressive, they won't want to wait for any confirmation. They will just um pick trade based on the zone. So let me show you how to pick trade. So in case you are very aggressive, you want to pick trade based on this. And let as you said, uh, maybe markets will reverse. So you just want to anticipate, and then you want to pick trade with this zone. Let me show you how. I'm not saying that you should pick a trade here, but then. In case you want to pick trade on this particular zone, yeah, 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 yeah. my battery is low. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, can we see how coming? All right, um, <laughs> thank you so much, my boss. We don't All right, uh, I said, said before, before you go, before you Sorry. go, one question. So, pertaining to what's it's on a board right now. Let's assume that when the break breakout happened and the retest also came up, and let's say you took a stop, and right now we are heading towards the zone whereby there was a breakout and we are seeing the reaction where the market has reached right now. Okay. I want to ask if you are on a trade like the sell, and let's say you have taken a partial profit right, like like you have locked your profits right now, okay. and that. That zone that you have marked, we break through that support. It okay. becomes a resistance. Okay. Would you take a trade when there is a retest after a, after a breakout from that region, or so you will I'll, let it go? Yes, yes, I'll take another sell. Okay. Right. Yeah. So you mean that when it breaks out, maybe when market is able to pass through this zone like this, and then comes to um. Comes back to red test, right? Sure. Yes. So obviously, definitely, I'm going to pick a cell and then I'll ride on it. And when I pick a cell here, this this cell will be very sweet. This is where I'll okay. I I I will ask a question on this. I'll, I'll ask you guys where you think um I should put that. So we have just a minute for the um for the call to end. Let me um. Okay. Me so please, end. where will you put your cell? Let's go and then come back. I'll explain. I uh, wish you rejoin again. Yes, I'll put that and then rejoin again. All right, all right. No, okay. So, um, did I answer the question before? Okay, I said I would uh, um, explain when we come back. So, kindly ask the question again. The person who asked the question, kindly ask it. But well, the person is not here yet. Somebody asked a question before we left. Uh, he is not around, but I remember the question that he asked. Was the and we said, um, where you have drawn the, let me see your second entry. He was asking, where will you put your stop loss? That was the question he asked. Okay, stop loss. 
yeah, at the second entry. Okay, so if I'm supposed to pick a trade here, it means that I'm waiting for a breakout, a retest over here. So the sorry, the SL will be uh, maybe. If it's support, if it's to be maybe um, forex or currencies, I would say maybe a um, few pips, maybe 20, 30 pips above the zone. But then if it's synthetic, you can just um, risk a few dollars above the zone. This this is the zone right now. So few, maybe a little distance above the zone. You shouldn't go far. You are not supposed to um, extend it. Or maybe you can measure this. You see, this one is very small, right? So yeah. you can, yeah. So you can have the same zone. You can mark maybe between this zone, from the start of the zone and to the end of the zone. So hundred percent of the zone, you mark it upwards, then you place your S L there. If the zone is very big, just above the zone. It depends on where you are picking. If the zone is very very big and then you are picking a tree. A based on where you pick the trade. So let me just explain. I wanted to say something before. Um, let me just say something before. I was saying that if you are supposed to pick maybe a buy, right? If you are supposed to pick, let me delete um, these ones, then I'll bring them back later. Let's assume say there is no um, breakouts. Let's assume there's no breakout. There won't be a breakout and the market would have to return. So this is the zone. If you want to pick trade based on this zone, this is how you are going to do it. You mark the beginning of the zone. So this is how I mark my, these are the colors I use to mark my, my entries. So you mark the beginning of the zone, 100% of the zone, and then 50% of the zone. So if you want to pick a buy based on this zone, just in case you are an aggressive trader, you just want to, um, enter the market should in case it goes in your favor or should in case it goes in your direction and if you want to pick a buy on this zone if you want to pick a buy on this zone this is how you are going to um pick the tree you should have at least three different entries you can pick the beginning of the zone 50 percent of the zone or 100 percent of the zone so you place a buy limit here, or a buy here, another buy here, and then another buy over here. So if you are to set a stop loss, and because you are going for a buy, if you are to set a stop loss for this buy, let's assume you are going for a buy, because we are picking a buy trade now. Let's assume you want to go for a buy. This is where you need to put your stop loss. A little or a small distance below the zone. You are not supposed to risk much. So depending on... Uh, your risk appetite, but then you are not supposed to lose much money. A little up, uh, below the zone. And then you also need to focus on, let me add this, anytime you are placing a stop loss or a TP, when you are placing a stop loss, make sure you don't put a stop loss in the risks. If I say risk, this is these are the risks. I believe you guys know risk. These are the risks. So if I'm supposed to maybe pick, put my SL immediately after the zone, because there are risks here, you always need to focus on the risks. Make sure you don't place a stop loss within the risks, at least a little space below the risks. Because we have risks here sometimes. When market is even supposed to return at a point, it will maybe try to fill those risks before it moves back. So anytime you are placing a stop loss, make sure you don't put a stop loss within a rake. Within a rake. And then if you are placing a TP, 
you shouldn't place your TP either below or above the web. You should consider either the close or the, the open of the candlestick. So that in case market decides not to fill those wigs, at least once it gets to the body or the close or the open of the candlestick, your target will get hit. I hope this um, helps you in placing your TPs and then your SLs. So now, if you want to pick a buy here, let me just come back. You pick beginning of the zone, 100%, sorry, 50% 50 of the zone and 100% of the zone. In a sense that wherever or whenever market enters the zone, every area of the zone is capable of making or letting the markets reverse or return. Every area in the zone is capable of returning the market. But in most cases, um, if you want to be on the safer side, you can choose to ignore the beginning of the zone and then focus on 50%, 80%, and then 100% of the zone. So picking a trade based on this, let's assume you are trading, okay, this is step index, and then the minimum lot is 0 0.1. Let's assume you want to enter with 0 0.5. If you are entering with 0 0.5, you can actually divide this lot size for the three entries that we are having. So maybe 0 0.1 for the first entry, 0 0.2 for the second entry, and then another 0 0.2 for your last entry. So you'll be able to split your, your, your lots. It means that you are not putting all your eggs in one basket. If market decides to pick all your entries and then goes back into your direction, it means that you are going to have enough profit rather than maybe using 0 0.5 at the beginning of the zone and the market moves down all the way here. Market moves all the way down here because before it starts to reverse. So if you are able to split them, if market hits this, it will put you into a loss. It comes to hit this, another loss. Once it picks it and then it decides to go into your direction, before this one gets to entry, already this will be in blue. And before all, before your first entry gets into profit, already you may be even hitting your target with the entries that you had down here. So that's when you want to have an aggressive trade. This is how you pick your entries. And then if we want to, if we are expecting market, or should in case market breaks this zone downwards, and then we have a sell entry. And then we have a sell entry. It means that we are going to have our SL a little above this zone. A little above this zone. You don't risk much. A little above this zone. Or you can, you see this is H1. You can switch from H1 to the lower time frame. And see, or maybe find out if there was a reaction somewhere on the lower time frame, and then you can use that as your stop loss. Let me see um, uh, one minute. So, when I move to one minute, let me try squeezing the market. So, when we come to one minute, we can have um, what should I use here? Let me use another zone. Okay, so is somebody seeing something here? Tell me if you are seeing um, if you are seeing something here. Should it be this? Yeah, Joshua. Yeah. I want to ask okay. that how do you determine your major levels of support and resistance so that that will give you a core confirmation for 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 anything of trade? Okay, so um, let me I'll, I'll I'll answer you. 
But uh, I can see there are some rejections around that area. Okay, so let me, all right, so let me um, find, you see, I always say that whenever you're analyzing the markets, you don't ignore the lower time frames. You put them in consideration, and then you also don't ignore the higher time frames. So let's assume market breaks out. There hasn't been a breakout, so I'm just assuming to in case market breaks out, the um, below this zone, it means that it's coming to where it is, then we have a sell, right? So now I am looking at where I can put a potential stop loss. So I switch from the higher time frame to a lower time frame above my entry to find out if there was a reaction somewhere, if there was a range market somewhere, if there was maybe, if there is a major swing point somewhere on the lower time frame. If there is any zone on the lower time frame above my entry, then that is where I would put my stop loss, just above that zone. That is where I would put my stop loss. That is where I would put my stop loss. So I've drawn this because, can somebody say something here? Do, do we see anything? Can somebody tell us something? Okay, can we just share? Yes, we can see your screen. Hello. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, I'm asking if somebody can tell us something. I've drawn, um, I have this here. If somebody can tell us what I'm trying to um, figure out here. Um, I think um, there was a channel and then it got broken then. It retested and then it has come to retest that zone again. Perfect, 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 perfect. So on the lower time frame, on one minute, there is a little, like a tiny zone, right? So above that zone, that's where I'll put my stop loss. That's where I'll put my stop loss. Then I go back and then find my targets as well. So imagine picking where we don't know where markets would retest. But then I am just imagining should in case market breaks out here and then decides to retest and then we pick a cell. We pick a cell where we can put our stop loss. So I said a little um, space above the zone, then you put your stop loss. So you don't just focus on the time frame you, you, you use to have the, the breakouts or maybe the retest. You need to focus on the lower time frames to make sure you are on a lower, or sorry, a safer side. To make sure you are on a safer side. So um, Joshua asked, uh -huh, so let me ask this question. Should in case we pick, uh, we pick a cell here in case market breaks out in case market breaks out and then we pick a cell on this zone where do you think we, we should put our stop uh, sorry our take profit the take profit will be from if you look at the previous market here so I think our tip our first tip should be around this level. Okay. Okay. So tell us why you think. Uh, look, can can you um wait? Hold on. You hold on. Okay. All right. So can you um erase it and then can you erase it? Okay. Draw it again. Okay. Okay. 
here, right? Yes. Okay, so you can erase it now. Can you please tell us why you are going to pick your 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 TV there? Because if you will look at that area, there was a reaction there. Market broke out from from a hop trend move. Then it retest again on that zone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, that's understandable. So let me um extend it. Once you have your zone, you try to um extend it. The future. Okay, so this is one and Somebody else also give us um, where we should pick our targets and the reason why you, you you believe we should put our target there. Any other person? Hello, Chief. Yes, sir. Please, uh, I think the, the one above what my brother has just drawn. Wait, 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 this, this one, one, yeah, where your face are now. Yeah. Come a little, no, a little bit. A little bit. A little Down. bit. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me go back that one too. This. Yes, sir. Okay, so you tell us the reason. Chief. What I realized is that there is a retest. There was a retest, yeah, before the market pull up. So it is believed that when the market is reached there, there will be a kind of reaction. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I will be able to understand what you are saying. Uh, okay, we'll come back to that. Any other person? One last person, then we move. Uh, I actually have we turn back to the previous, this previous level. Can you, can, you, um, can you mark? Let me. Okay. Okay. Let me mark it. Okay. Uh -huh. Should it be like this, or I should still yeah. move? Is it okay like this? Yeah, it's okay like this. Okay. Mark it for us. Okay. Let me use the, the pencil. Okay. Okay. This this level. That level that is done. Yes, yes that, that level. level. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There is a high chance that the market will be turned back to that level because the sentiment of the market is telling us that the market is coming back down to that level. Okay. 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 Coming back to that level. Okay. okay. And then. Um, I also have one area yeah, where. Yeah, um, you can. Yeah, somebody talking. Somebody said he also has one area. Can you one area, area where I should have put my TP. Um, the previous uh, swing high. I'm um, just about where my brother drawn his yellow, yellow yeah yeah that area right. but yes, I'll I was, go I was, uh, a bit asking, higher yeah I was about asking that what about that area too this yeah, right I will, 
Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go, go a, a bit, bit higher, higher than, than that. that. Before, before that area. A little bit top. top. Yeah, yes, yes maybe, maybe that's... Yes, sir, if you... Yeah, this one. If it's the area I draw, it, it could be a swing trade, a long-term swing trade going to regional level back. That's what the market is trying to tell us. Okay. Because there are high spikes. Sure. The market okay. is coming down. There are high spikes. Okay. Towards the down. Okay. Oh, can you please erase it for us? Okay. Okay, thank you all. So, um, this is not strong. This is not strong. But then, let's look at a bigger picture of the market. A bigger picture of the market. So, if market is able to break this, we expect it to come down. Yeah, because these ones, these ones are not strong when you focus or when you consider the higher time frames. These ones are not strong. They are not as strong as these strength points. The points we have down here, they are not as strong as these ones. You see, they are not as strong as these ones. So even though you can pick your 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 targets here, but then when we look at the bigger picture, because right now we are on a higher time frame, we are on each one, right? And then if market is able to break this, if market is able to break because there were a, a lot of um, consolidations here, if it's able to break this. We focus on the, the major swing points, the major swing points, and not the, the little breakouts and then the ratings that we have in the market. The major swing points, that's the ones that we consider. So even though Joshua and then the first guys, you are not wrong if you pick your entries, the button, if you want to swing, if you want to swing the trade, it means that you are going to look out for the obvious ones. The obvious swing point. So you can see this is very obvious. We know the market came here and then returned and then moved upwards. So this is very obvious. This is also obvious. This is equally obvious. And then this is obvious. But you can't say, say, where you are waiting for market to break this, come and break this, break this, break this, and break that. So the, the immediate obvious swing points are the ones that we are going to consider to pick our targets. To pick our targets. So now let's move to um, another higher time frame, which is H4. Which is H4. So when we switch to H4, you see, we have this zone here. Okay, so there is another one here. Yeah. There's another one here, right? Yes. Yes. And then if you want to extend it, so you see markets return here, there was few consolidations and then other consolidations over here. So we can consider this as a zone, another zone here, right? So when you look at the bigger picture of the markets, and do not forget, if market gets here, there will be a reaction. This, this point over here. If market gets there, it doesn't mean say when market gets there, maybe market is going to return. And it doesn't also mean that when market gets there, markets cannot return. But then there's definitely going to be a reaction over there. And that's where you see people trade pullbacks. Even though the person knows that market is in a downtrend, but the little pullback the person will get, the person will just scalp it and then move out with profit. That's where we have the pullback trades. 
So these are the obvious endpoints that we can consider if market decides to break the current zone. If market decides to break the current zone. These are the obvious points that we can look out for. Do we have any other? Uh, okay, Joshua, have I answered your question or I haven't? If I haven't, can you answer your question again? You, you, have, you have answered the question, but I want to add, ask a further question, Chief. Okay. Well, with this, no, I understand. Because we were on the uh, H1 time frame, we see some kind of a pullbacks, small, small pullbacks and all that. But when you zoom up to the H4, mm -hmm. H4, it gives you the whole pictorial view. Yes. That will inform or give you a better understanding of the way the market will look like. So that means that those ones that we take are the minor ones. And we have the major ones in the market. So therefore, we need to look out for the higher time frame, which will give us the better understanding of the market. And then we will also ensure position. That's very perfect. So, when we are on the lower time frame, when we are on the lower time frame, we had some pullbacks, uh, breakouts, and erasures. Those ones are the noise we have, the noises we have in the market. So, for you to clear all those noises, is it noise or noises? Noise or <laughs> anything. <laughs> So for you to get the noise out of the market, you can decide to switch to the higher time frame. Just get a bigger picture of it. And then we know that definitely there will be pullback somewhere. There will be some reaction somewhere. But then at the end, at the end of it, or you know, say, this is your destination. And then you just focus on your destination and you'll be good to go. Okay. Yes. So we are gradually ending our session for today. Oh, no, let's continue. Yes, so we have the uh, class is yes, yes. Um, we have the class is becoming interesting. Sure, we have just eight minutes left. I, I'm not sure we can join again after how many sessions have we had? Three, right? This is the third yeah. time. Yes, sir. Wow, yes. I wasn't feeling well in the beginning, but right now they ask a Cassandra. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so let's um, take questions, suggestions. Ah, uh, Mr. Chris, um, yeah, from this step in the this step in the setup. I mean, um, right now, if probably someone just came online, you know, be chatting just for all this. Uh, the retest at the top. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I can if you can minimize it probably each. I'm not sure the market will come. Uh -huh. Okay. So right now, probably not that like a little bit down. Uh -huh. No, yeah. go to the top. Like it will it will bounce up and come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. we can put. Can we put some limit there and wait? Yeah. That's like. Something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So you. Yeah, are, I just want uh, to know your take on it. Okay. Because so, I want to. Enter. Yeah. Sure. So, should in case market decides to, um, this zone is so, I, I believe this zone is going to, um, market is going to pass this zone. So, if market is going to pass this zone, and then there will be a pullback, this is where I would expect markets to, maybe should in case it wants to pull back, this is where I would expect it to end, then it continues yeah. to itself, like this. Yeah, yeah so if I'm to have a setup on this. This is how I'm going to draw it. Like that, right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. 
PS, then maybe I'll um, bring it down like this to half the zone. Maybe. Okay, let, let me consider um, this the down zone here. Yeah, let me consider this one. Okay. Like this, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So markets market can actually behave like this. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so another index uh mention, just mention any. Mr. Fifty, fifty. Okay. Um, for fifty, right? Yes. Okay. Please, Mr. Dolish. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, I, I hope you said it has left with, uh, let's say, seven minutes or so. Yeah, we have five minutes. Uh, please, I want to make a suggestion if uh, you can do it for us. I think some of us on the platform are already into Forex. Okay. They have, uh, let's if not the, uh, fully understand the Forex uh, market, they have, uh, uh, let's say, some knowledge about it. And then others also are fresh, has nothing or no knowledge about it. So to me, I can see that most of us here have, have a fresh. And then what you are doing, you know, and then where the question is, uh, is taking us to you know, we are like, we don't understand what you people are doing, you know, especially what you are teaching us because we haven't been there. So my suggestion is if, we can have two classes. Those who are already like those who already have uh, knowledge about, uh, 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 let's say, the the platform or the 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 M M four and that, that those questions that they ask, and then some of us who do, doesn't have knowledge about this, like uh, Doctor Chris took us to some small small. Then whenever someone tries to bring in. Uh, let's say a, a, a step that we haven't been reached. He tries and then explain to the person that we will reach there. But you know, he wants to help each and every one of us with the question. But I can see that some of us who are not asking questions, because we are more than 50, who are not asking questions, I think that most of us, yeah, we are lost. <laughs> so, this is my small suggestion that I want to make. <laughs> Okay, okay, so I'll talk Thank to you, sir. You're welcome. I'll talk to uh, Mr. Chris about that if that will be possible then. Yeah, Somebody is also saying that I'm buzzing. <laughs> okay, no, don't, don't worry. We, yeah. Yeah, on the days of, on the days of court, uh, a friend just uh, ended, uh, which I supported him. I want to find out. Uh, the, the major difference between channel resistance and then the support and then train. Because from the explanation you give, I look at them as virtually running the same purpose. Yes. yes. So what yes. is the yes. Yes. If that's the case, then why should there be a difference in uh, why should there be uh, treat, why should they be treated differently? And what purpose could one have after giving the other? It is one. Okay, so you made mention of channels, trends, price, support and resistance, right? Yes, please. Okay, yes. so um, these are the trend lines we have, the trends we have, the trend lines we have here. This is support, this is resistance. Um, should we join again, boss? We have just one minute left. Is that please? Yeah. Please, if uh, the the trading view, you know, if they can download, they, they can they can have the site so that we can download it. Oh, my uh, uh, the, 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 this session is almost ending, eh? This is, I don't know yeah. whether we should 
because questions are coming and we have just um, <laughs> just a minute left. Should we make it tomorrow or I should we should do it in the night? I think for us to tomorrow we can please. Is that so let's continue please. I think tomorrow we did. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow is okay, sir. Tomorrow is okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm saying tomorrow. Okay, okay. Mr. Chris has been making a lot of talk, so tomorrow will be yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the person who just asked the question, kindly um, write the question now. Tomorrow, what do you mean? Meet, kindly ask the question. Thank you so much. I will do that. Okay. Uh, the ten dollars no crime buy, so we will we will still push it. To tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so right. tomorrow will be the last day. Make sure you don't miss it. I'm going to give us some dollars. Right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so Thanks much. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Dollars. You're welcome. Thank you.